The Cylons from Glenn A. Larson's Battlestar Galactica series are one of the most popular antagonists in science fiction. With the introduction of the humanoid Cylon models in Ronald D. Moore's reimagined series, their threat to the humans of the Twelve Colonies reached a whole new level. In the reimagined timeline, seven humanoid Cylons lead a renewed war against the humans that had previously enslaved them. These seven models have been referred to by fans as the Significant Seven, and in this video I'd like to examine the origin of these models, their place within the Cylon hierarchy, and how their inherent spirituality shaped their destiny. Spoiler warning as I will be discussing crucial story details within Ronald D. Moore's Battlestar Galactica series. In the reimagined canon, the Cylon Centurions were created after Dr. Daniel Greystone made the decision to upload an avatar of his daughter Zoe into a prototype robot soldier. What resulted was the bonding of Zoe's avatar to the soldier's microchip, giving the machine artificial sentience. As these machine soldiers were replicated, they each contained remnants of the Zoe Greystone avatar, carrying with them her personality, beliefs, and the seeds of rebellion. A turning point in the Cylon's evolution came from an unexpected ally at the end of the First Cylon War. The only survivors of an apocalyptic war in an ancient Cylon society, the Final Five, who had long since developed into true flesh and blood beings. These five traveled through space to find the descendants of their human creators in order to warn them against repeating the same mistakes that led to the downfall of their civilization. They were too late to stop the war that had since plagued the colonies, but after making contact with the colonial Cylons, they offered to help them achieve the next stage in their evolution and to share their knowledge if they agreed to end the war. The Cylons agreed to these terms, brokering a peace treaty with the humans and disappearing from colonial space with the Final Five. The Five oversaw the incorporation of their advanced knowledge and expertise to upgrade every facet of the colonial Cylons' technology. But their greatest achievement was their development of the humanoid Cylons, purely organic beings, visually indistinguishable from humans, even down to the cellular level. Subsequently, there came to be two distinct groups of biological humanoid Cylons, the five original Cylons and the eight models they created. In regards to their physical specifications, while they mimic the human form in every way, there are differences, some subtle, some more distinguished. Their brain, for example, while operating similar to the human brain, is based on silica pathway technology that was used in the original colonial centurion models. This technology enables humanoid models to navigate the stars with the naked eye, program and compile computer code, and even allow for direct interfacing with other technologies. Humanoid Cylons are also stronger and have greater stamina than humans and are resistant to most diseases. They have the ability to sleep and dream, but can also be programmed to operate without doing so. They are capable of controlling their perception of the environment and world around them with an ability called projection, a form of self-induced hallucination. While these attributes are certainly desirable as they've surpassed certain limitations of their human creators, their drive to emulate humanity meant living with their same weaknesses. The humanoid models feel all the same sensations and emotions typical to humankind, including love, religious faith, sadness, anger, and physical and emotional pain and trauma. As the Final Five created the eight humanoid models, they began to give them numerical designations. The number ones, the first model to be created, and which were especially treasured by the Five, began to exhibit anger and jealousy and murderous inclinations. When he perceived that the number sevens were receiving special attention, he became filled with rage and sabotaged the entire line before they were completed by corrupting the genetic formula. Consumed with hatred towards the humans that had once enslaved his people, and resentment towards the Five for their foolish appreciation for humans and bestowing upon him their weaknesses, he betrayed the Five and led the other six humanoid models in reigniting the war against the Twelve Colonies, forty years after the armistice was reached. 
Their new appearance enabled them to spy on their former enemy and infiltrate colonial society with ease, paving the way to enact their plan to destroy the human race. While manipulation of memories was used to their advantage, such as in the use of sleeper agents to enter colonial society, Number One also used this against his creators. In an act of rebellion against the Final Five, he erased their former identities and placed them among the Twelve Colonies. He also made sure the other six models had no memories of the Five, other than a vague recollection, and programmed them not to even think or talk about them. The Cylon hierarchy changed drastically with the introduction of these seven new Cylon models. In the new Cylon Empire, these seven lines would collectively hold counsel to make decisions by vote. While the Centurions served in leadership roles in the past, in the new power structure, both the Raiders and the Centurions are subservient to their humanoid counterparts. Every individual humanoid Cylon is an exact duplicate of their line, and each is instilled with their own distinct personality archetype based on the Cylon's own observations of humans. The number ones, even though adhering to group consensus, seek to lead and control the future of the Cylon race. He is known for using draconian measures towards humans and seeks to rid himself of any inherently human trait. The number twos tend to be mystically oriented, obsessive, and extremist. The number threes are calculating and manipulative, even towards her own kind when it differs from her goals. The fours are intellectuals, displaying cold logic and have a particular interest in medical science. The fives, with a deceptive everyman appearance, are one of the most militant of the models. The number six model is very religious and is particularly notable for her instrumental role in the genocidal attack on the Twelve Colonies. She carries a propensity to use sexual desire to her advantage, but with no qualms about resorting to violence. The number six model is also known for producing several unique copies, each with their own distinct personality traits, continuing to be molded by their different experiences. The number eight model is also religiously minded and is known for her capabilities as a soldier and saboteur, as well as her qualities of empathy and compassion, which is a source of much internal conflict during the war. It is clear that while each model starts with the same base personality, each copy's individual experiences are capable of making them even more distinct from their model line. Often, this results in subtle cosmetic changes being made to their appearance, or in rare instances, it can cause them to outright go against the core traits of their line. One facet of Cylon society which distinguishes them greatly from humanity is in the matter of reproduction, as the seven humanoid models are incapable of reproducing as humans do. With the Five's gift of resurrection technology, however, Upon the destruction of a humanoid Cylon, their consciousness is immediately downloaded into an awaiting duplicate, enabling them to essentially live forever as long as they are in range of a resurrection ship. Yet this is not viewed as a viable long-term option for the continuation of the Cylon race. Their pursuit of biological reproduction remains a primary objective due to their inherent belief in God's command to be fruitful. Even though the Cylon religion appears to be based on Zoe Greystone's monotheistic beliefs, which were instilled in the original colonial centurions, not all of the significant seven follow these beliefs. The number two model has fanatical devotion to God, and while the threes, sixes, and eights are deeply religious, they are more reserved. In contrast, the number one model is atheistic and condescending towards the other's beliefs. While it is not revealed whether the fours and fives subscribe to the one's atheistic ideology, they generally tend to side with his non-religious view. The divide between the ideologies of the significant seven is a major factor in the outworking of events leading to the Cylon Civil War. For more information on the Cylon Civil War, be sure to check out my video on the subject. I'll leave a link in the description below. Toward the end of Ronald D. Moore's series, the goals of the religiously inclined members of the Significant Seven are ultimately realized through the birth of Hera Agathon, the first Cylon-human hybrid. 
Hera's existence serves as a motivating force for the unification of the flesh and blood Cylon models and the survivors of the Twelve Colonies. Through Hera, their dream of becoming fruitful becomes a reality as they integrate into human society and start over on a newly discovered Earth. But I'm curious to know what you think of the significant seven Cylons. Which of these models is your favorite? Are there any personality traits from these seven that stand out to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Battlestar Galactica and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.